Hi there, my name is Will. Welcome to this particular tutorial. Now, in this video, what I want to do is demonstrate to you guys how to set up in C Sharp the logic to process controller inputs in your application. Without much further ado, let's just jump straight into this video. And now what I want to do, and before we dive into the code, I want to explain some of the conceptual ideas behind what we're actually going to do. And to help do this, I'm going to just draw your attention to an image, a diagram, which is up on my website. This is the written version of this tutorial, so feel free to check it out if you rather read it in your leisure time. And we have here this concept of a computer rig and application, and there's a communication via um, a, an arrow here, and this arrow represents the controller data. So, you know, when you press the A button, you're moving the analog stick, you're sending some kind of data to the application, and this data travels throughout the levels of the application down to, like, the the level where the slim dx libraries essentially parses your logic and then it brings it back out where we have access and members and functions that can access and modify these values and then we somehow affect the c-sharp front so kind of using this general model as a guide i want to show you guys a way that i found to um basically compute um, controllers, controllers that are connected to your machine, um, so your PC game or application, whatever application you may be um, developing, can interact with this peripheral in order to update your front end. So let's jump straight into the code base. I'm just going to switch my screen. I'm using Visual Studio 2017. And if you did check out a couple of my uh, last videos, you may recognize, well, actually, it's just my last video. Uh, you may recognize this project. It's the same one that renders the rectangle. And what I've done, I've basically um, constructed a particular class. And this class here, if I can find it, is the controller dispatch. Now, the controller dispatch is a particular, is a particular class which deals with everything to do with the controller. So just to give you a bit of a context, this is an empty C Sharp project. And this particular project is a SlimDX, um, it calls a SlimDX library in order to, um, so that you can basically program 2D and 3D geometry. Right now, it only programs 2D, I've programmed 2D geometry rather, and it's just a simple rectangle on the screen. But let's just say, for example, um, you have just your own empty project, you can still transpose these concepts. So the idea is you want to have a class that deals with the controller dispatch, basically. And I've, I've named it controller dispatch. So we're going to hop into this class. My mouse is a little strange for some reason. Yeah, okay, cool. I'm just going to, I've hit F12. Now, let me take you to the top. Because I'm not going to explain everything word for word because the article actually does go into things in a little bit of detail. But I really do want to highlight and just emphasize the fact that we are not particularly using these this delegate and events um it's here in the function in the i won't even say in the functionality but it's here in the class and um i was initially just kind of experimenting with events using an event-based structure but we're going to kind of simplify things a little bit so you're going to want to define your members we have a flag here for controller input it's a boolean and there are some slim dx classes that you're going to need i'm going to just scroll down so you can see we have direct input input we have a list of joystick we have a joystick object we have direct input we have sticks an array of joysticks we have another array of joysticks which is probably not being used yep so i should have deleted that apologies for that and uh, there's some more unused values so don't worry too much this is quite a rough template um, but the article does go into a little bit more detail and kind of trims what you see here hopefully so you have the stick button just scrolling down to see what we need so many members that we don't need and uh, don't worry about that what we do need is uh, an array of bool to basically hold the state of our buttons you're going to need also somewhere to store the values of your x and y your X and Y positions of your control stick. So when you scroll to the left, right, up or down, you're basically affecting a value that represents the Y and X axis. Um, you will need a GUID. I think I have it as a property or something, or maybe I'm just really not using this. So every, anything underlined in green, just don't worry about it. I'm literally not using it in the um, in the functionality. Um, what we're concerned with is everything that's not underlined. So state, and importantly, you're gonna want some way to call the update. Um, the update loop functionality, I have a dispatcher timer and I've instantiated it. And as you can see here, the dispatcher timer calls this function called check controller input update. So 
at every millisecond, I've set this to quite a fast rate of time. Um, this function, check controller input update, is called. And um, just before I hop to this function, uh, it's quite important to initialize the um, game controller object itself. And the way I do that is that I construct this joystick state, which is a slim DX. Um, it's a slim DX function and the function is called joystick state. And I am actually returning uh, a particular object which I'm storing in state. Now, um, if we hop to state, if I just hover, it's a bit hard to see because of the um, resolution of the screen, but this, um, this variable is of the type joystick state. So it's a little bit confusing, but um, just bear with me as we go through this example. Um, this joystick state is basically the return of this function. So if I go to the um, get stick function, which is the next line down, I'm also storing a array of joysticks. So this is kind of the flow of what's going on right now in the sense that we are instantiating through get stick. Oh, it's a function I wrote. Uh, we are actually instantiating the game um, controller itself before we start to pass the logic uh, of the inputs. So this is the logic in um, get stick, which serves to instantiate the game controller itself. Um, I won't go too much into depth into what this is doing, but on a high level, we're basically calling this acquire function. And... Um, from the acquire function, we are also configuring the game controller in the sense that here, my mouse is being very strange today. It's a bit hard to drag stuff. But anyway, that's not really important. This line of code here up here, it's setting a range of minus 100 to 100. And what this basically means is that between this range of minus 100 and 100, we're, we're always saying is that, okay, on the analog stick, we want the furthest or the highest value of x minus x, y, and minus y to be minus 100 to 100 respectively. So minus x minus y will have a maximum value of minus 100, and um, um, positive x positive y will have a maximum value of positive 100. So this can come in handy in this if you want to kind of alias, or uh, yeah, if you want to anti-alias your inputs. So for example, if you have run to run forward it's, let's say, a particular value uh, in the Y plane, just as an example, if we're looking at a two-dimensional two realm here, um, then that can either be in a sort of Boolean configuration from zero being absolutely idle and one or greater being moving forward at top speed. But if you want to move slowly, what if your, your game character wants to crawl or something, then you can kind of anti-alias the um, value by um, evaluating for segments of discrete numbers that are less than 100 or greater than minus 100, but they're in particular ranges. So you could say between 0 and 10, I want my character to walk. Between 11 and 20, my character should jog. Between 21 plus, you know, up to 100, I want my character to run. So you can kind of do these kind of checks, but this sets the overall range. And then we're adding, because uh, this is all being assigned uh, this is all being called on the stick member, and I'll just quickly jump to its uh, definition, which is up here. It's the declaration joystick stick. I'll just go back. And we're adding that stick into our, I think it's a list. Yeah, our list of joysticks. And then we also, kind of on a similar vein, we are adding in the list of joysticks uh, this stick button object, which is here, and that's the um, the joystick that we hit that we call the acquire function. I just want to see what the type is really quickly. Okay, so it is of type joystick. That's fine. We hit the acquire. We um, call the acquire function on that one. So again, the general source code is on the written article. This is just gonna give you a general idea of what's going on in like a kind of audible way. And then I'm just also calling to array, and then I'm returning sticks. So after that, there's another important functionality, and I think that leads us to the check controller input update. So I'm going to just go back to the constructor. And uh, once we've done all of that uh, in the constructor, 
what we do is that we start the clock, we start the dispatcher timer, which then acts as our update loop for this. It basically pumps our update loop. Uh, what we're doing here for the capacity or the length rather of sticks, we are calling this function called stick handle. And this is kind of the main functionality that I've created here that parses the input logic coming in and it accepts as a parameter a joystick for, uh, a joystick object which we get within the array of joysticks that we created and id which represents the id of the gamepad so there could be like one gamepad connected to your computer this is going to have a length of one if you have like multiplayer and there's like two of two friends then you're going to have a length of two so let's just say one for example we're going to go to this function I'm going to hit, a, I've hit F12. And this is the main kind of the meat of what's going on here. Again, I'm just going to try and overview this at a high level. Um, I don't really want to go um, line for line everything that's going on. And there's probably better ways you can get around this functionality. But this is just like a simplistic example. So my joystick state, which is actually a SlimDX um, class, what you can do is you can store the current state of your joystick um, and the joystick, remember, has been passed from the list of joysticks that are connected to the PC, and we can get the current state. So we have certain members regarding the current state, and uh, we can store that in a variable. So we're storing that in state. And we're similarly, we're getting buttons, we're accessing state, and we're calling the get buttons function. So basically, uh, if I'm not mistaken, we're basically just getting the state of the buttons via uh, our... Um, state mem our state member here basically now what we do with this logic we can then start to calculate um how much has the controller been pushed to the left right up and down what buttons have been pressed and in order to do that i just set a really simple loop for all the but all the um boolean buttons so the states of the buttons are represented by booleans and this particular approach sort of sort of demands the responsibility on the developer side to know what buttons are stored in the array. It's not going to just say, um, this is the A button on your Microsoft controller. This is the C button on your, I don't know, joystick. It's just going to be um, an array of true and false. And because the library is sort of low level, it just means that we it, all the, the data, the information is quite generally generally displayed to us. It's general purpose. It's not catered towards Microsoft controller A, B, or, you know, uh, a controller you may have bought in particular in, I don't know, Game Station or something. It's just a general controller uh, passing general um, information, general data, and we have to parse that logic ourselves. I really hope that makes sense. It probably doesn't because I'm explaining really poorly. But anyway, <laughs> what we're doing here as I'm basically saying, and this is the logic that I would just say substitute with your own logic. I repeat, substitute it out. I'm going to comment it. Put your button input logic here. I didn't like what I wrote there. So I'm just going to put, leave this comment. So what you're doing basically is you're saying, okay, within this array of buttons, um, if any of the button states are true, then you can do something regarding your controller logic. So if I press the A button, maybe my character will jump. Um, if I hit the B button, maybe my um, car in my driving car, in my racing game is going to accelerate, something like that. And similarly, in this function, I'm also um, evaluating for the state of the analog stick. So if the state X is greater than 20, then I update the property and I have this concept for all um, X left, right, and Y up and down. So I'm updating the properties. And that's literally the function. And when this all runs, which I will actually put some breaks. So if I just kind of scroll down here and I go to the properties, I'm just going to put a break on the setters. I've got two particular properties, x-axis and y-axis. Just going to leave a break here. I'm going to run my program. I've already got a Microsoft controller. Uh, Microsoft controller is connected. And so as soon as this program is loaded up, I'm going to just um, put the window on the main screen that's being recorded by OBS, which is just going to be a rectangle on a black background. You're not going to see much. I'll even place this kind of debug screen that always comes up first. 
and I'm looking at a white screen off screen and now it's yeah now it's rendered so it's just here and I'm just gonna click it just to activate the window if that's what I need to do and anyway I'm gonna hit right on the controller and my break has um, fired I've tripped my event not event sorry I've tripped my setter here and now the thing is uh, I know the resolution is small I'll probably have a little snippet to zoom in over here and it's showing the value of 100 so I pushed the right stick in the positive x-axis all the way to 100 and maxed it out um, if I can just move my mouse it's been really weird and so I'm just gonna see as you can see it's zero there so if I just quickly step through it's now updated to 100 and this just basically means that okay now the program knows that this public property has been updated so now this public property can be accessed anywhere within the scope of this solution of this project and we can do whatever we want with regards to control input so it's as simple as that that's how you um that's one way you can set up controller input using the slim dx library once again and uh, do check out the written walkthrough for a more should i say slightly thorough um tutorial regarding this this is just a high level gloss through and there's some more snippets of source code there so uh, thanks very much if you did watch and do continue to follow the channel for more in video games develops development c sharp and .net. have a great day bye bye